Good morning. Thank you all for joining uh, this morning uh, for our um, our MAC uh, implementation as far as study guide for the plumbing section for this course here. We're going to we got a few areas that we're going to try to hit this morning. Uh, we put it posted up here talk about, you know, reading the blueprints for plumbing, um, valve operations and how they're constructed, plumbing codes, a little bit on plumbing codes, not a whole lot. Uh, pipe connection methods, uh, sewer augers, uh, piping material, uh, reading fluid gauges, pressure gauges, uh, letter codes for copper thickness of pipe. I always like that one. Backflow preventers and the functionality of plumbing pipes, vents, traps, and potable uh, systems as well. Uh, just to give a little background on this uh, study uh, guide for, for the MAC. We will be proctoring the test. When I say we, the, uh, the CSHE, California Society of Health Engineers, will be proctoring this test at both the Northern and Southern Conference this year. So study hard, you know, take the test. I look forward to seeing a lot of MAC, uh, MAC certifications out there. I, I am very excited to see this program really move forward, and uh, so much so that I volunteered uh, when Dave brought this up. So. Let's go to the next slide and dive right into it. A little brief outline on this. You know, we talk about uh, the plumbing and pipe fitting, uh, fundamentals knowledge of pot potable uh, water and waste systems through the use of tools and components in plumbing. I want to kind of give an overall guide to where that things make sense for when you're taking the test. You know, I can't give you, nor do I know the exact questions that are on the test, but I'd like to kind of give you an overall, you know, what would it, how does this make sense? And a lot of times through when you're taking a test, this process of elimination, things will make sense to you with a good general knowledge of plumbing. I uh, was just telling Beth, you know, with all the degrees and certifications and everything else, I started out as a plumber. And uh, I enjoy plumbing. I still do my own plumbing. I did plumbing last night at home. How's that? So um, I really, uh, I really enjoy the subject, and I appreciate any questions that you have uh, that you want to put in the chat box. We'll try to get to those at the end of the presentation. Uh, the technical modes of this, of the course that they normally lay out, of course, is uh, about projects and discussions regarding the plumbing systems, the applications, and tools. Of the industry, the basic plumbing systems and components tools are combined with hands on experience in plumbing applications is normally what you would see in the MAC training program. But we're really focused on today about the um, about how to the knowledge that you need to uh, accomplish a test and pass this section of the test, which is I think it's around 14 of the questions will be on the test will be on plumbing specific. Uh, next, please. And this is kind of a little guide. I, you know, I thought about this a lot of times when people ask me what is plumbing. Uh, this usually is what people think of. We, we think of hot and cold water, uh, you know, that normally goes through sinks and, and uh, you know, may run to the hot water here, of course, you know, as you see in this, this diagram here. And, uh, you know, have a various components. When we get into healthcare, there's quite a bit more than what we have in just normal uh, household plumbing. Uh, next, please. And so I thought, you know what, we might as well take a look at, you know, when we talk about the connections and pipes and everything else. In a hospital, you know, we have, uh, you know, a lot of sterilizations and such that, that we use uh, for steam and everything else in there. And they're all different types of plumbing uh, connections that we use. And so I thought it would be, uh, you know, uh, I would I would be lacking in explaining on the plumbing side if I did not mention, you know, all the different complex systems. And I thought, well, what's the, one of the most complex systems out there, of course, is the uh, steam system where we have all the plumbing connections and such. And uh, and if you're a design engineer, you know, of all of the uh, criteria as far as um, condensate return and such. That we have with the systems, you know, and uh, I thought this was a nice complex way to kind of bridge that out. What is steam? What is condensate? What's the flash? What's the vaporizer side of it? And try to get into just a little bit of some of the complexity and then bring it all back to the simplicity 
of, of what plumbing is in a healthcare setting. Uh, next, please. So when we look at a, a hospital, we look kind of like, you know, uh, a good, what is plumbing and where does it go? You know, it goes all the way from the patient rooms, you know, at the very top of this illustration. And we talk about the water treatment facility at a plant. I mean, right now, Legionella and everything, we're treating water with, with uh, chlorinations, we're flushing, uh, we're using that. So we're doing a lot of water treatment. We do water treatment, of course, for our cooling towers. We do water treatment for our chillers. Um, we do water treatment for our boilers. We, we have, we have um, all sorts of areas where we have water treatment in a facility, water treatment facility side of it. And even those that have or on well water have water treatment. But I'm not getting into the complexity of that. I'll leave that for another lecture, that's for sure. But I wanted to hit on that, that there is, there is some complex systems within uh, healthcare as far as on the plumbing piece of it. If you look at, as we rotate uh, counterclockwise, we talk about food preparation in a hospital, all the plumbing areas that are there. Like in a normal kitchen, you would have all of this, plus you have all of the additional um, sanitation that, that occurs inside of a, of a healthcare kitchen and food service side of it. The lobby, you know, I, I, um, I would be amiss if I didn't mention this, a lot of hospitals now are not built with some of these water features within the hospital, but even the water features have plumbing that is required for that. And uh, how, do, how do you make sure that all of those are functioning? Um, going the other way, the wastewater side of it, you know, uh, of course, most of us do not have wastewater plants at our hospitals, but a lot of us have lift systems uh, for, uh, for uh, you know, grinder pumps. Uh, we have retention. We have all of these elements. And a lot of stuff will not be on the test, but I wanted to make sure to kind of give you an overview for it. Um, uh, the next most complex piece that we see a lot of times in, in hospitals is the dialysis unit. We know that we have to have specific drain lines for the, uh, for the dialysis units now. Uh, some are now, you know, taking a lot of those complexities out of it that are contained within the units, but uh, a lot of healthcare facilities still have the uh, specific drain lines for dialysis units. And, uh, and of course, last but not least, is the operating room. You know, we talk about all the sinks, you know, for the for the surgeons uh, that are put in installed, everything stainless steel, everything, you know, we're trying to get everything touchless uh, that's in there. So there's a lot of complexities that we have within the healthcare facilities as far as for plumbing. So plumbing is, you know, you know we used to, um, when we would do an overview of what a hospital is, plumbing is the artery of, of the hospital. You know, it really, it takes care of uh, all, the, all, the, all of the uh, life-giving um, flow for that building itself. Uh, next, please. You know, this part of it, you know, most people that, you know, may cringe, but I actually, um, uh, when it comes to equipment and stuff that we use within a hospital and uh, even on the residential side, I, I have to I have to admit when I looked at this picture and I brought it in, I can remember dreaming of having such a nice auger machine. You know, I, I that's how much I love the plumbing side of it. Is that when you saw something like this, that would be uh, the most the best Christmas present I could have is a new uh, sewer auger. And um, I bring this up because on the test it will talk about all of the drainage uh, pipe systems and everything that are out there. Is a very 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 fair game for having this on the test. Uh, we talk about the different types of uh, heads that are on there, uh, some for retrieving things, some for cutting things, some for pushing things out of the way when we talk about doing drain cleaning and, um, and how we do that. Um, you know, a lot of us, you know, we still think of the hydrojet, you know, the hyd hydraulic, um, the hydronic side of it to really push and clean and cut through everything with high pressure water, but these sewer augers, uh, spring augers are still utilized quite a bit today. Uh, next, please. Uh, general plumbing, you know, uh, I wanted to make sure that when I did the presentation for the, for the practice of this test, 
I had to keep in mind that I'm not speaking to just plumbers. I'm also speaking to electricians. I'm also speaking to carpenters, uh, all the different trades and also the general, general um, um, maintenance person that's gonna be out here taking this test. So I wanted to make sure that I, I looked at some of the complexities and, and some of the simplicities of plumbing systems for, for, for a hospital. And uh, looking at some of the tools, these are tools that I, I had used over and over um, uh, in, in my past. You know, some are very unique for removing valves, and some are very unique for tightening clamps. If you look at the the uh, bottom right, you see the the T handle with the thing. It has a slip on it so that you wouldn't strip out the uh, the clamps that you would tighten up with. Uh, the strap wrench um, we used to call a monkey wrench, which is below there. Uh, I got in trouble many times by calling the next one up there a crescent wrench. It's actually an open end adjustable. My father would tell me that crescent is actually a brand. It's not a type. And um, so I still, I still recall that to this day. Um, but knowing the general tools that you'll need for plumbing is important and understand how to utilize those. Uh, next, please. This is... Uh, this is something I wanted to make sure, and it's actually, it actually ends up being um, one of the test questions, uh, practice test questions. And I thought, you know, it's good to have this up and because a lot of, a lot of folks don't know uh, about copper pipe and how it's sized, right? And so you'll see that they'll say, uh, you know, it's a three eighths uh, copper pipe. Well, three eighths is not necessarily three eighths when it comes to copper pipe. Uh, the actual outside diameter of a 3-8 uh, copper is actually half inch. And depending on the type of copper, this is actually goes with the different wall thicknesses of the copper, it can have a different interior uh, diameter. That's important when it comes to looking at uh, flow rates and resistance to flow. Um, a 3 8 3 8 copper uh, having a half inch outside diameter if it's a K type, uh, it's it's you know, it's only uh, 402 thousandths, right, on the interior diameter, and so it's a little bit thick, right? So L, you know, is you know 430 thousandths, uh, M is 450 thousandths, and the reason we we call it 450 thousandths is because we're talking about thousandths of an inch when we talk about the thickness of of a uh, copper pipe. You know, one inch the same way, it rolls down through the same way, two inch all the way through it. And you'll see different size copper pipes uh, within a healthcare facility and setting. And it's important to understand the different uh, usages, uses for uh, the copper pipes and why they will require a different uh, wall thickness. And a lot of those are in the specifications and then the local codes that are applied to uh, the plumbing. Uh, for your healthcare facility. Uh, knowing that uh, they come in different lengths, uh, they come in uh, drawn uh, and also annealed. You know, we'll kind of talk about that when you talk about the anneal, you know, it's in a coil. Um, but to the right, if you look at that photo, uh, when we would go and do inspections, we would look to see how well the plumber actually you know had everything rolled in there you saw the same thing on electrical we'll talk about conduit uh, but it's a good indication of the quality of the craftsmanship of the trade that actually did the installation this is a very good installation and in, in how everything is rolled in there if you see the different size pipe and how they uh, made the turns and how they're all parallel with each other this would be something i'd feel very comfortable with uh, doing an inspection on um, next please so I thought I would bring up some of the, uh, you know, sample test questions. And I'm, what I want to do is I, I wanted to read them off to you and, um, and then give you the answers, of course. I don't want you to, you know, be in, in, in test uh, limbo. But uh, for most vowels, they are named for, you know, they talk about the overall uh, outside vowel shape or internal closing configuration, the type of service intended material from which they are made are some of the possible uh, uh, selective test questions, you know, what the answers for the question. 
Um, so think about that just for a minute. And I only did three at a time so that you could kind of keep them in mind as we go through them. Uh, it says, which of the following wrenches is used for, uh, for pipe work, right? And so they talk about a chain wrench. And I, kind of, I showed that earlier, a strap wrench, a uh, sort of wrench, and a crescent wrench. Remember the crescent wrench that I told you my father says, no, it's an open and adjustable. It's not a crescent wrench, that's a brand. So keep that in mind. Uh, changing uh, hard uh, copper tubing to soft by uh, heating is also called what? Is it, you know, is it work softening? Is it material uh, softening? Is it a molecular uh, degradation or is it annealing? So now for the grand reveal of those uh, answers, those test questions, uh, Seth, next, next slide, please. So the answer is, so for most valves, uh, they are named for their internal uh, closing configuration. So you'll talk about gate valves, we'll talk about globe valves, we'll, you know, we'll talk about all the different valves, but it's mainly about how they close on the inside. A butterfly valve is, is a butterfly valve by the closure of it. It literally uh, looks like the flapping of a wing when you close that. Um, which of the, uh, the, the following wrenches is used? Uh, for steel pipe, and so they use this uh, Salento wrench specifically for its gripping capabilities for a steel pipe. Um, definitely wouldn't use a crescent wrench because it's made for uh, flat walls. A uh, chain wrench you wouldn't use, a uh, strap wrench you wouldn't use because it would slip. Um, changing uh, the hard copper tubing uh, by to soft by heating is called annealing. That is a um, mechanical uh, property changing where you actually anneal the pipe. And so there's different uh, ways and means to do that as well. And if you looked at, remember when we talked about the copper pipe or earlier, we talked about coil pipe, whether it was annealed or not, uh, that's uh, indicative of that as well. Uh, next one, please, Ben. So this one is, uh, you know, it would be very difficult to teach you all of the uh, different shapes and stuff. I thought about this quite a bit, but it's probably good for you to review this in a, in a text, you know, in a textbook to go through it. But to know, uh, to be able to read the drawings, most drawings, of course, now, um, you know, you will see a, a key at the very beginning. Uh, if you have a set of blueprints at your office or at work, uh, take a look, because, uh, you know, we're required to put those keys in there in place and to make sure that you can understand what those symbols are and what they mean. But this right here says just matching the symbols in the same order as the following type of, of connection. So they've got a flange connection. That's pretty uh, simplistic. So I, I would already know the answer just by knowing what a flange connection is. You wouldn't need to know the rest of it. If you know what a flange connection is, you can actually collect, select the correct answer. But also knowing what a, what a welded connection is, knowing what a bell and, and spigot connection is, and what a solder connection is. And those symbols actually make sense once you understand what, how those things go together. You know, talk about a flange connection, you have two pieces of pipe, they, they have two flange uh, rings on there and they're bolted together. That's uh, pretty easy to spot and they, it makes sense once you look through that. Uh, the pressure release valve on a uh, water heater. This one I actually had to think about a little bit. So it uh, it keeps the tank from overheating. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, is not required. Hmm. That doesn't that doesn't sound right. Uh, creates the necessary pressure. What well, could be? But I think the most the most important piece of that is that we look at. Um, uh, is it installed at the at the discharge drain? That might be the answer. Let's take a look and see about as we go to the next one here. It is. How about that? So the pressure relief valve uh, on a water tank is installed at the discharge uh, drain. So when you're taking the test, think about the logic of it. Eliminate the different uh, uh, things. Of course, it's not it's not it's not to say that it is not required. We know that a relief valve is required because if you don't, you know, the tank could overheat and the tank could rupture. So by process of elimination, you pretty much eliminate a lot of these, even without a lot of robust plumbing knowledge. Uh, if you remember uh, the visual I was trying to create 
on the test question number four there, we talked about a flange welded belling, belling gossip and solid, uh, uh, solid, uh, soldered, excuse me, soldered connection. Uh, a is definitely the answer because you can see the two flat rings, you know, visualize the two flat rings. And uh, it, it even tells you that uh, number four, when it says they're, they're in the same order as the following type. So if you only know flange, you could definitely spot this and get the correct answer on it. So that's a little, uh, a little uh, uh, hint on how to take some of the test, test questions there. Uh, next, please. Does all plumbing fixtures uh, should be uh, installed with? And so uh, remember I, when we talked about earlier about all the different systems that are in a hospital that are, that are, that are there. And so when you look at the possible answers, is all plumbing fixtures should be installed with hot water supply, cold water supply, uh, drain stops, or our valves, right? So you kind of think about that. Well, we know not all of them are going to be hot, hot or cold, you know, when we talked about some of the steam systems, but just kind of think about that one, and I'll give you the answer here shortly. Uh, the sewer augers are also called, and I thought this was pretty good, being a, an old plumber, uh, a, a rotary unclogger, I like that. Uh, drain snakes, uh, clean outs, you know, uh, metal, uh, metal plumbers. So it, it, you know, okay, that's uh, so whoever wrote the test questions do it does have a sense of humor as well. So that's that's a good thing. Uh, the next test question where it talks about uh, backup preventers are similar to expansion plugs, uh, drain stoppers, pressure regulating valves, or check valves. Hmm. I bet most of you probably know this one here, but let's go ahead and take a look at the answers. Beth, next slide, please. There you go. Um, number six, for all of you that have uh, had an emergency in a hospital, I think you will appreciate the fact of uh, the answer for number six. All plumbing fixtures should be installed with valves. How are you going to fix something if you don't have a valve to isolate it, shut it off? So um, we would like to see more valves, not less valves in a healthcare facility, especially when we have, uh, have an event and we need to be able to shut it off and make those repairs. So definitely uh, it's not that all plumbing fixtures should have hot water or cold water or uh, drain stoppers because we know that that's not true. We looked at the systems earlier, we talked about the uh, uh, steam systems, you know, the plumbing systems with that, they don't all have hot and cold water, but they all have valves. Valves are required to be able to maintain and to uh, make repairs of a, of a plumbing system. Sewer augers, so it's uh, drain snakes. That's what we, we used to always call a lot of the sewer augers was drain snakes. And uh, if uh, for the old timers out there like myself, uh, we probably, um, before we had a lot of these spring cable sewer augers, we had flat tape. It was flat metal that we used to, to, to push and, and plunge down the drains to try to unstop things. So they used to call that a drain snake because it, it would look like a snake because it was all coiled up. Um, backflow preventers are similar to check out. So we're trying to make sure that things don't back up. And uh, backflow preventers are, are uh, utilized in many plumbing systems. You know, we use them for uh, the main water supply coming into a facility. I, I, and uh, you'll have it tested. Either you may have people in-house test that, or you may have it as an outsource service. The backflow preventers are required because, you know, if we lost uh, pressure from the city, we don't want water from, uh, from other systems inside the hospitals to siphon and go back into the water supply and contaminate that. So that's why check valves you know, are, are vital to the plumbing system for a uh, hospital and uh, for even domestics. You know, if you're, when you go home tonight and you look at your, if you have a sprinkler system, make sure you have a check valve, right? You don't want to lose uh, water pressure, you know, outside uh, to your supply to your house and then it's sucking uh, the water back into uh, siphoning from the ground, sprinkler heads back into the, the domestic water supply. So you want to make sure you have a check valves and all of that. 
Um, next, please. Next questions here I thought were pretty good. I, uh, you know, I, I don't have many left, so I really, I, I want to cherish some of these pretty well. But potable water is considered to be uh, toilet water. I like this. Uh, soap, soap uh, trap water, uh, city water, or treated water. So that's, uh, that's one to think about. Uh, which, which is not a plumbing trap configuration? S, a snare, a P, or a crown? That one, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one uh, for most, I would assume. Uh, number 11 is the head pressure and pressure per square inch, R. And so they give you, uh, or the same pressure, uh, red with uh, two different gauges. Important only with uh, standing water column. Hmm. Converted using charts or calculations. And the answer is, Next slide, please. Uh, for potable water, all right, is, is considered to be uh, um, a city water, right? Uh, potable water, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure how many people are probably a potable thinking of a pot and thinking uh, toilet water, right? But it is not. It is a potable water is definitely uh, city water that's coming in. Um, Treated water, the reason why treated water is, even though city water is treated, uh, treated water can also be from a wastewater plant. The wastewater uh, coming out of a wastewater plant, it is treated water before it goes to um, the natural streams and such. So uh, treated water is not the answer for potable water. It is city water or uh, domestic water coming in. Uh, which is not a plumbing trap configuration? Well, a snare is probably, uh, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good guess if you had to guess at it. So a snare is something, of course, that catches something. And we definitely would not want to uh, uh, snare anything that's coming through, maybe unless it was jewelry or such. But a snare is not the answer. Um, it would be an S trap or P trap or a crown trap is, is are, are definitely uh, plumbing traps. Are you there? Head pressure and pressure per square inch are, and they're uh, they're converted using charts or calculations. So, uh, head pressure a lot of times, you know, we as we design um, systems, we need the, what that head pressure is going to be. We use uh, a lot of calculations, a lot of charts for pumps. So when you have a pump that you're installing, you'll need to know what the head pressure is or what the pressure you're trying to, to achieve. Uh, pressure uh, uh, per square inch is literally that. It's a calculation. So if you were to um, uh, look at uh, 12, uh, 12 square inches, right? right at, uh, I'm sorry, 12, 12 by 12, that's 144 square inches. What would that water column be? And uh, pounds per square inch, you you end up uh, using that through your calculations, right? So it brings it all back down to what is it per square inch, not per square foot. It um, so you use the calculations to do so, which is pretty. Uh, it's a pretty good uh, test question. I think uh, I could probably throw a few, but just just knowing that it's normally by charts and calculations that you calculate what your head pressure is going to be and your Air pounds per square inch. Uh, next one, please. Which uh, hand valve is used to meter flow? This is, this is pretty good. Uh, and most, there's a lot of times that uh, if the wrong valves are installed. Uh, so you want to, so this one is something that uh, pay close attention to. Uh, the next one, I think most of you would get uh, right away. But it says which type of plumbing connection would not uh, use a compression fitting? And of course, uh, you know, a compression fitting. Uh, if you think about uh, at your home, you have a refrigerator that has an ice ice maker. Uh, you have a compression fitting usually that's uh, drawn down onto that quarter inch plastic. A lot of times, it's going into the uh, uh, Ice maker, and so we'll talk a little bit about that when we look at the answers. Uh, gray water, okay, is considered to be uh, a toilet water, b soap trap water, uh, c city water, and d treated water. 
And the answer is Beth. Next slide. All right. So number twelve. This is which uh, hand valve is used to meter flow? And it's a globe valve. So if you think about how you're tightening things down to to slowly, slowly, slowly change that flow through it, globes are pretty good for controlling or metering what that flow needs to be. Uh, gate valves are not. Gate valves. Uh, if you if you look at a gate valve and you're trying to close off on it. It has, uh, it's coming down. It literally comes down like a guillotine as it goes through there. It's not very good at regulating because it, it's uh, the cross sectional area uh, changes dramatically from the center part to the very outer edge. So it has very little change, very little change, more change, more change, a lot of change, less change, less change as you go through with the gate. A check valve, of course, is you know to prevent flow going backwards. And a ball valve, you'll probably see more ball valves installed, uh, but they're not the best at metering flow to where you want to have a specific flow rate. Glow valve is actually one of the best valves for that. Uh, which type of plumbing connection would not use a compression fitting? So I kind of gave you a little hint there. Um, when you think about, you know, this is a, the answer to this question, I would visualize that ice maker that you have at home. You know, you have a copper lines, a lot of times it's coming up to it. Uh, you'll have a brass a compression fitting there. Uh, and you'll have the plastic is going there. But plastic to plastic normally is just glued together. You know, it's uh, if it's PVC, uh, ABS, you'll have all the different types of glues, uh, primers and solvents that you'd use to make that connection. You wouldn't use uh, a compression fitting for that. It would not make sense. Uh, but for all the dissimilars, uh, you definitely, when I say dissimilars, you would use this compression fitting for that. Uh, copper to brass, uh, copper to plastic. You know, think about copper to plastic again when you're thinking about that ice machine, you know, or that uh, even the refrigerator at home for those that are not doing plumbing. Uh, think about that at home and you'll probably get this one correct. Uh, gray water. Um, I thought about what's the best way to kind of give you a little way to remember all of this. So gray water, definitely it's the soap trap water. And um, gray water is, um, you will see gray water used uh, for different things like irrigation and such out there. Uh, gray water is not toilet water. It needs to, toilet water has, uh, needs to be treated. Uh, city water, of course, is coming in. And treated water is water that's treated usually from um, can be treated from an effluent from a, a wastewater plant or treated could be, uh, if you're treating it for different uh, elements within the facility. You can treat water for your uh, chilled water system. So you can you treat water for your boiler. You can treat water for um, the many different systems in there, but gray water is not just considered tree water. It's gray water is definitely soap, crap water. So it's water that um, is uh, has, has a very lower, much lower uh, uh, bacteria uh, count within that, and that's the that's kind of the the wrap up of the test questions here. Uh, Beth, I guess is our last slide, uh, but I kind of wanted to make sure that we had had time to kind of talk through uh, and and answer some questions that you may have uh, out there with regards to plumbing, and I know I've got, hopefully I've got some. You know, some good plumbers in here. That's going to be a tough one, be a tough question or two. I usually do not get into codes, plumbing codes, and I, and the reason why is two things. One, uh, a plumbing code can be quite different from one area to the next, uh, other than national plumbing codes. Uh, but the other part is they're constantly changing. You know, so there's we found out there's one change or the next change. Has occurred, so there's there's always quite a bit difference in plumbing. Uh, but um, I will open this up for uh, any questions you have. Otherwise, I want to tell you a story or two. So go ahead, Beth. Is there any uh, questions that we had come in through the chat? No, nothing in the chat. Um, but feel free to unmute yourself if you have questions, or if you put them in the chat, I'm happy to read them out for you as well. So 
Phil, I, I would expect at least one question from you here. What do you do? You have anything for me this morning? You're probably so amazed at, at presentation. Is that what it is? Okay. Go yeah, I, I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> <sighs> I'm I'm not a plumber. Uh, but I, I did recently take the test and I was surprised to see how much the test is similar to the sample questions given. Very good. That's good, that's good insight to know. You know, a lot of times we, uh, when we try to write uh, test questions, we try to make sure that it's relevant. You know, we try to also uh, make it fair, you know, to those that are that have a general knowledge and not uh, not something that's just what we call obscurus, right? So it's so obscure that there's no way anybody can come up with it. Um, I would uh, just go ahead. I, I would also point out it's a national test. It's mm -hmm. not a California test. Yeah. And there are some questions that uh, the correct answer would not be appropriate under California rules. Yeah, that's true, and that's you know that's that's the thing. A lot of times we uh, we get we get logistically specific, right? And so uh, we have rules and regs in California that are that are definitely uh, more stringent than more than the national code. So when you take a test, you got to think about it, and that's a very good point, Bill. It's a national test. It's not a California test, you know. So codes and everything are very difficult to keep up with. But at the same time, you have national codes that that really broaden out the perspective of what you're going to do. So, uh, and there, there are a lot of safeguards in there. I I thought about bringing in a few of the photos of some of the disasters that I've seen um, out there in plumbing. And how did they ever occur, right? So a lot of times they're not, you know, either weren't inspected, uh, weren't designed, uh, weren't in installed correctly, and uh, you'll find them, you know, within even within your healthcare facility, you'll see things that people um, use to patch things up to try to make it uh, still function and usable, and um, so you'll come across that. Um, I remember as uh, as a kid. I literally had a box of fittings, and so I would, I, you know, I needed to go from a half-inch iron pipe thread to uh, to a three-eighths. Well, it, you know, it's, it should be like one fitting, right? It should be, you know, a bell fitting, and um, I would have to use like three or four to try to get there, right? But that's that's how I did it because I I didn't, I didn't have a hardware store to go run to, so I used whatever was in the box. So you'll find that when you come through it, so you'll see things are not quite quite to a code. Um, but basically, you know, I wanted to make sure that people understood when it comes time to taking these tests, a lot of, a lot of it, you can uh, go through a process of elimination. You know, when you look at the test questions, uh, especially on plumbing, like I was mentioning there to you earlier, uh, they will try to write things in there to get it down to at least uh, two plausible uh, possible logical uh, possibilities, and so you're kind of down at a 50-50 mark when you're when you're trying to mark that off. Uh, but just use logic. Uh, don't get hung up on a test question. Uh, you know, if you don't know it, you know, usually your first impression is usually correct. You know, and go with that. Have confidence and and don't stress it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, stress uh, uh, test. Uh, uh, strategies that you can use when you're when you're taking this test. I don't feel if you want to mention to that, but you know, mine was uh, you know, get a good night's sleep. You know, cramming you know the night before usually is not the best way to get there. Uh, take your time and be ready. You know, like mentioned early when we you know in the Northern Conference and then the Southern Conference, uh, uh, CSHI, we'll be proctoring this test, and um, I really want to make sure that we have as many here with that certification as possible. You know, in healthcare, a lot of times we're, 
our value, you know, we're not seeing, you know, in the forefront, you know, until things go bad and then, then the engineering is really recognized for, for their heroic deeds, you know, that's out there. So they don't see us um, taking care of the, uh, of the chillers or the, or the boilers or, or a whole lot. I even had a healthcare executive tell me one time he was humbled the first time we took him to a central plant, right? And um, he'd been in healthcare for over 30 years. And so these certifications are something that actually uh, are recognized, you know, and I, I'm, I'm not sure on this one particular one, if the Mac, if we get a patch or whatever, but it would be pretty cool if we actually had a patch on there that said Mac, right? Mac certified. And um, I, you know, anything that you can put on there uh, to bring uh, uh, validity to our trade is, is just that much better, you know. And um, I, I, I tell you this with all uh, humility that um, I, I went, uh, I, I talked to the dean of uh, the College of Engineering, at the University of Missouri. And uh, I told him that I wanted to uh, be a mechanical engineer. And he asked me why, and I said, uh, I said, well, I want to have a degree that shows what I know. And uh, I never forget, he was so angry, he actually stood up and he says, well, I'm going to tell you something. He says, um, you don't know as much as you think you do, but he says, if you go to the school here, he says, you will learn something. And um, he was right. So when you take these tests, there is also a possibility that you may learn something. It's not just a validation of what you you know, but you may actually learn something in the process. And I think that's uh, that's something that I've always taken to heart. You know, when uh, whenever I review the material, you know, I learn something that or it brings back something that I I thought I knew. You know, and um, it's a, it's a perfect opportunity to expand your knowledge but also bring, gain uh, validity, you know, credibility to the trade that you practice here in the healthcare facility. So um, I think it's important that as you do these things, make sure that it's managed up, make sure that your, your leadership knows that you've taken the test, you've, you've accomplished this, you've achieved that certification, you know, uh, of a MAC. And, uh, and the importance of that. You know, I want to see more healthcare leaders have a CHFM. I can tell you working on the um, government side that it is highly recognized, you know, that you have these certifications and required in most uh, Department of Defense uh, healthcare facilities. So this is a great thing, a great opportunity for us to uh, expand our trade, uh, to, to gain uh, credibility and to also expand our knowledge. And um, I am all for that and uh, try to try to move that forward. Uh, is there any other questions that we might have for an old plumber here? Anything else? Jeff, you've been quiet. I mean, I'm sure you've got a question or two there, but if not, I'm gonna try to wrap this up and give you guys some time back for the day. But uh, thank you much guys. I, I appreciate your time this morning. And uh, good luck on your test. I hope to see you. I will definitely be at the Northern Conference. Um, and uh, hope, we, hope we'll see you there. Hope to see you take this test and get that certification. But that, that's all I have for today. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Charles. Uh, just a quick Thank announcement you, so, everybody, so everybody knows, I'll be sending out an email either later today or on Monday, but the next study group will be focused on general maintenance. And that will be two weeks from today at the same time, 8 a.m. But that email will, will be in your inbox today. And I thank you all for joining us. And thank you again, Charles. And I hope you all have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it.